All right, welcome guys. Yeah, welcome to what <laughs> podcast number three. Three, now, right? yeah, this is number three. Podcast for us. number three. And as you can see, we have upgraded our setup. Yeah, and not only our setup have we upgraded, we have upgraded our guest. Oh yeah, <laughs> sorry <laughs> Casey. Like it's an upgrade. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Sorry Casey. <laughs> um, we have Andy on here, um, yeah, yeah. and we are stoked to have Andy. Andy is from mm -hmm. Crosswalk, mm -hmm. and you uh, just actually you've been there for a while, but now have officially become is it the youth pastor, right? Uh, youth leader. I think that's youth the leader. Youth director. Youth director. Yeah, yeah. I'm, right. I'm hired there full time. Uh, helping out with high school, junior high, and college. Uh, not sure on official title, uh, but yeah, I'm no, there full time works. hired. I know what that means. Too. Right, yeah, yeah. right. That's awesome. You're man. a pastor. You are a pastor. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Yeah, you're a That's pastor. Awesome. Thanks, brother. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, tell us a little bit about you. So I, I'm new here, so I don't know. I'm still getting to know everyone. Um, I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this know you already. But for my sake, fill me in on yes. your your history here. Redlands, Loma Linda, tell, tell, us, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, man. Yeah. So my name is Andy Palomares. I do a little camera thing. Uh, <laughs> you have to do uh, them to all the cameras. All them, yeah, right, there's man. like there's a billion four. cameras. There you go. But yeah, my name is Andy and uh, grew up in Riverside, California. Shout out to 951. And I uh, went to Loma Linda Academy basically my whole life. Uh, didn't really have a home church growing up. It was always like jumping around. I was at La Sierra Spanish sometimes. I was at La Sierra University. I was here at Loma Linda University, uh, but never really had like that one church that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. really? um, yeah, I graduated from high school, uh, Loma Linda Academy, then went over to PUC. Shout out PUC. Mm. And uh, glad PUC. glad that they are safe from those fires. That, that was a <laughs> that scary a good thing. Yeah, yeah, PUC is like a second home for me. So like those, those couple of days where... But you didn't graduate closer. at PUC, did you? I didn't, no. I was there for three years, and then I went to La Sierra. Um, because yeah. job opportunities, and then I kind of like the program at last year. Nice. Uh, but PUC is still that second home for me. So shout out PUC. Love you all, all my PUC peeps. And yeah, so I, I've been in college for, I, I just graduated in June uh, with a uh, bachelor's, um, what is it? It's not theology at, at last year. It's uh, religious, religious studies. studies. Yeah. Religious, religious studies. studies. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, five years. Now I'm done. Now I'm working wow. full time at Crosswalk, which is great. And uh, Congrats, yeah. Congrats, man. You guys, you know, you guys are doing awesome things over there at Crosswalk. Thanks, man. Definitely and uh, we're stoked to have you on. This is uh, it's this is our third. We like we we keep talking about this. The first time we're like it's first podcast was like super awkward, <laughs> <laughs> and we're slowly <laughs> we're slowly easing into this yeah, yeah. the, the podcast different. world. So it's good though. It's good. Um, so we want to start off by talking about we want to we'll look back on the message from our our past anthem online gathering. And uh, if you were watching, um, you heard Pastor Randy as as he was talking. We were talking. We've been in this series called Seven Plus One. Yeah. Seven ideas that could change and save the church, and one that could save the world. Oh, wow. And uh, so that was, dope. that was big. That was huge. We've touched on you know God. How the first time was God is God is uh, He's not looking for uh, a mission for His church in the world. Rather, God is looking for a church for His mission in the world. Wow. Right. That God That's already great. has a mission. And as we as a church, are we are we ready to get on board with that mission? Right. And, we're and stepping into it. We're stepping into it. We've mm -hmm. talked about, you know, how that mission is not a small mission. That mission is a huge mission. It's big, and yeah. you know, here at Anthem that we wanna we wanna go full on in this mission. We're partnering great, with man. with our CEO, our business partner, the creator of the universe, and we believe that big things big things can happen, you know. Yeah. Uh the second one, uh talking about how the Holy Spirit is an essential ingredient. In the church, we look back uh, at, in the book of Acts, we saw the early church, how the Holy Spirit was continually uh, moving in the church and kind of contrasting our church here in 2020 with the church uh, in the book of Acts and, and kind of looking at what are what are the similarities? How yeah. how do we how do we look at what was happening in the book of Acts and how do we kind of look at what's happening here today with how the Spirit is moving in our own church? And, and we had you know an awesome discussion on that. And today we're talking about um how the church simply needs to love people for who they are. That's great, man. And uh, you know, I wanna I wanna preface, I wanna start out by <laughs> this conversation. Yeah, please do. <laughs> I was trying I was trying my best to, how I could phrase that the best way without 
coming across as too cliche because I think that the goals love people. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. All right, this, all right yeah. we're gonna be talking wow. about love, love on this podcast, <laughs> anthem podcast. Talk about every love, sermon. Love. Ever. Yeah, I know, right? Um, yeah. So I, I really wanted to to start this conversation out by by acknowledging that yes, this this whole idea of hey, all right, we need to love everyone. This can go. This can get cliche really quickly. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think in this next you know this next forty minutes or so. We want to kind of touch on some maybe some different ideas that maybe can take us a little bit deeper, mm. and and maybe not even. And here's the, the the ironic thing: I say deeper, but maybe even not as deep. Maybe we need to. Right. Maybe we need to start Back to the basics, right? Exactly. Maybe we need yeah. to start from the basics. And uh, so, real quick, I just kind of want to touch on on some of the points that Randy brought up. You know, of how we kind of have these different roles. We think the church has a, has a has different roles. Yeah, you know, some people, hey, we're out to tell the world, you know, this is what you're doing wrong. This is what you're doing wrong. Here's how. To, here's the you know the list of things that you you can change that and and be in the right. The the church has a solution for these problems. So we have exactly. to make sure people recognize their problem. Yeah. So it gets really negative before anything positive comes right, in. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And then um, uh, the the next role that sometimes we get into, hey, we think that we are sort of, uh, we get into that savior complex, mm. right? You know, hey, we need to fix everyone's problems. Martha, Martha, Martha. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then we kind of, you know, sometimes often we move into also this space of kind of similar to the first one where we are sort of the moral standard, you know, okay, mm. this is right and this is wrong. And then there's this third role that gets brought up. Well, hey, you know what? Maybe we need to just love people for who they are because because guess what? God is God is the judge. Jesus is our savior, mm. and the Holy Spirit is our conscience. And we we are love. <laughs> we are love. My trap. So so I kind of want to start out, kind of bring, kind of get us on this yeah. foundation of where yeah, we're at do. here. That's great. And like I said before, it is it is very easy for this for this conversation to get cliche very quickly. But mm. we're gonna do our best to avoid that. We're gonna do our best to avoid that. But here's the thing: as a cool. church, we talk about this idea, this this quote unquote cliche idea of okay, we need to. We need to love the world. Love mm-hmm. is love is at our core. We we hopefully hopefully we preach love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would say some some places that that might be new. So <laughs> hopefully we we are a church that preaches love. Yeah, and we have this that you know we well, we 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 want to we want to love the world and what and well here's the thing I think that I want to start this conversation I think that as a church as a culture as human beings we we need to start. At the basics, how, how do mm. how do we how do we bring this back to where on a day to day basis? And I'm going to come from like I've said this before, the corporate worship setting because mm-hmm. that's where yeah. I've said this before. That's where my heart is. Mm-hmm. How do we bring it back to the basics? Where this idea that you know, as a church, we preach, hey, we need to go out, we need to love, but hey, maybe it needs to start with when you come to uh, a gathering, a worship gathering, you're able to love the person next to you in the seat next to you. Start with that. Mm. We're building a culture that is ingrained in in our in our congregations in mm-hmm. our in our worshiping communities. That hey, is that it starts on ground zero. That's it starts great. with yeah. hey, I can reach out to that person that's standing right next to me. It's a you know and yeah and yeah. whatever that looks like. So you know I want to start and you, you know you guys over at Crosswalk you have uh, your hashtag mm-hmm. I believe is it's so awesome because it, it it hits it right on the head. Right. You kind of hit it direct. Uh, love well, love well, love well, love right? Well. That's <laughs> and so, so great, yeah. like, it's great. You know, building a culture to talk about that a little bit. You know, yeah, this, yeah. this love well. You know, building that culture that I guess you could say is kind of like okay, we're, we want to start with the basics. We want to start mm-hmm. on ground zero, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I want to just give Randy Roberts a shout out. Pastor Randy, you did amazing. <laughs> uh, that man has creature. the best narrator's voice in history. Like he, if I had someone yeah. made a so movie if, about my life. if you had to pick Morgan Freeman or Randy Randy Roberts, Roberts bro. <laughs> Randy Roberts, Damn. OG. Yes. Dude, that guy. I don't know, Pastor Randy. Hey, dude, Randy, I don't know about this guy right here. <laughs> Come on. No, dude, he, if I had a movie of my life, Randy Roberts, I'd want him to narrate it. That, yeah. that guy, so awesome. amazing voice. But, <laughs> but yeah, so I think the best way to talk about it is uh, just 
talk from my experience mm-hmm. with church. Mm-hmm. And and my experience growing up was very odd because I never had like a home church for more than a couple months. We would hop around churches and sometimes we would visit other churches growing up. So I never actually got the the full experience that most people got like when they had their home church. Like uh, the community, the belonging, yeah. the right. sometimes support comes with that. Exactly. Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. Uh, and, and my parents, they grew up in church, churches that was, uh, well, my, my mom was a pastor's kid and she actually hopped around uh, the country. She was from Mexico. She's from Mexico. And my, my grandpa would take them all over the country. Uh, so she, she actually had a similar experience to me, but my dad actually grew up in one church basically his entire life. Yeah. And he got that experience of like, he knew everybody at his church. He knew, um, who he can talk to, who his mm-hmm. friends were and all that. And I, I never really had that, but I, I craved that growing up. I think mm-hmm. there was something in me that craved a community. Uh, I just didn't know how to label it yet. Cause in my mind, I was like, I just want friends. But now looking back, I realized, Oh, I just, I wanted a community, like someone that I could, su- yeah. I could lean yeah. into and that they could support me. And, and, and I would know that I wasn't alone. And I remember one time, actually, oh, I was at a, a certain church. I won't say the name. Uh, and we had been there for a couple months and I, I didn't have any friends yet and I wanted friends like so bad. And, and I am absolutely like introvert to my core. Like I am not the type <laughs> of person. Yeah. Yes, me, dude. Interesting. Okay. I am not, I'm not an extrovert. I'm totally introverted. I feel you, man. I feel you. I'm on the same page. Dude, brother. like, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, totally. Tommy. Yeah, I can, you gotta speak up more, bro. Come on. <laughs> no, nah, dude, I, I am totally introverted. And I don't know if you guys know about the Enneagram by any chance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I, so I'm an Enneagram nine. Do you guys know what your guys' numbers? Uh, I, I, I thought I you weren't supposed know. to tell your number to people. Really? Just, yeah, but I'm a three wing two. If anyone cares. I don't think you're, it's like telling someone your name. You're like, you got to tell someone who you are. <laughs> oh, California is different. Hey, you're a three? A three wing two, That's yeah. That's what's up. That's the CEO. Like, you're going to own this place someday. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyways, I, so I'm an introvert slash, and also an Enneagram nine. And for me, it's all about like keeping the peace. Yeah. So anything that disturbs the peace for me is, is, is something I shouldn't do. So not only is it hard for me to speak up as it is, but I also don't ever want to put anybody in tension and I don't want to put myself in a situation that, that was, that's tense. Yeah. So you, you take that kind of person like me and you place them in a new church. I was, I was terrified and <laughs> I was just left with this desire to have friends, to have a community, but feeling a lack of uh, the tools to actually make it happen, you know? And I remember one day, uh, or multiple Saturdays, I would show up to church and I was probably like 12 years old. And I don't know what, was it primary or junior? Something. I don't know. I don't remember what it was called. <laughs> um, and and I was going to this church and I wanted to like make a friend. And every Saturday I would sit in like behind this group of kids and I, I would just tell myself, like, Andy, just say hi, just tell them your name, like yeah. something like that. And I just, I would, I would never do it. I would just get too afraid. Yeah. And I remember one day I was driving to church and I was like, this is the day like I'm going to make a friend. Like I'm just, I'm going to do it. And as you're driving there, like yeah. sitting in the back of your car, you're like I'm doing this. I'm doing and, this. And as an introvert, you have to hype, really hype yourself yeah. up for these like things. I, yeah. I, I had Chris a, Tomlin playing in the car. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I am a friend. If, uh, <laughs> what's that? And if our God is for us, who could, you know, and I, I'm just hyping myself up. And as we get closer to the church, like I'm just more and more getting anxious and I feel like my courage that I had like at home, like dwindling fast. Mm -hmm. Um, And finally we get to church and I get into the classroom and, and I just feel even like at a more rapid rate, like my courage disappearing. And, and I'm sitting behind these kids now and, and I'm like, you know, I'll try next week, you know? And I just, I'm just hoping that at some point it'll happen, but I catch myself. I'm like, no, I got to do this. Like this today is the, is the day, yeah. you know? So I, I, I like muster up every ounce of courage that I had and I tapped the kid in front of me on the shoulder and he turned around and I hadn't really thought about it, what I was going to say. Uh, so my mind was like, just say you hi. You amped on doing that. Yeah. Like just getting like, someone's attention. Yeah. <laughs> so he turned around and I was just like, hi, hi, I'm Andy. And, and you know, when I say that to you, if I were like, Hey, what's up? I'm Andy. What would you say? Hi, I'm Tommy. Yeah, exactly, nice right? That's, yeah. that's where it should go. My mind was <laughs> like, that's three. probably where it's going to go. What happened was he turned around, he looked at me. I say, hi, Andy. He goes, shut up, stupid. No. <laughs> and in my mind, I'm sorry for laughing. I, I just oh, couldn't. No, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it, I just couldn't com- compute like what just happened. I was like, you broke every social code there. Exactly. Is. Like, what? how do you just respond with that? You know, like. Yeah. Like this is this is like a crazy guy. Anyways, uh, so he just turned back around. And I was like, I, again, just in shock. I think tears came. I left. Told my parents like I never want to come back to this church or whatnot. And yeah. and whatnot. And 
Yeah, that was a terrible experience. And why am I saying that story? The reason I'm telling that story is because in my experience, sometimes church has actually been the space that I felt least loved. Mm. And if we're going to take scripture seriously, mm. it would make sense that the community of God is actually where we'd feel loved the most, mm. that we would right. feel the most accepted, the most safe. Uh, and, you know, this was, I mean, it was, it's a sad situation when it happened, but it's kind of silly. Like we can look back on it and laugh because it's ridiculous. But the reality is, I feel like that is a lot of people's experience with church today. Like mm. if you were to ask them, like, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of church? I don't know if if love would be even on the first page. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. yeah. Things no, probably no, like right. judgment or things like um, picking out their insecurities or what they need to change will probably come up first. I think yeah. the number one thing, actually, like I saw a study on this, and the number one thing people respond to when you hear church is actually like hypocrisy. Like, mm. It's just like. They say one thing, but it's like, it's really not that. So, yeah. right, right. Like you were saying, yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's paired paired with uh, uh, whoever that, uh, in Randy's sermon, the first guy uh, or, or lady, I don't remember who it was, who um, was like, we have to uh, set the standards for the world and like make sure like everybody's getting here. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's such an odd thing that we take this, this, uh, self-righteous thing that we have. And then we're like, all right, you need to become like us when in reality, I don't have any confidence to ever say that to anybody because yeah. I know just how <laughs> flawed I am. And I'm yeah. like, Lord, if you're going to use me, there's mm. no way that I can say anything for this person. You know what I'm saying? So true. So true. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and, and that's, I think so key, you know, on this topic of like, it, it's unfortunate that, that these other terms get become the forefront, you know, mm. judgmental hypocrisy and, I think that that the, that's where it is key of how do you build how do you build a culture that is wrapped around this i this idea where it, it flows through it 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 flows through the people it throws through everything mm -hmm. the vision that said you know building a culture where someone comes to um, your community and it and 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 they and they they leave feeling wow I I felt loved mm -hmm. i felt genuinely and truly uh loved by these by these people yeah i think um i think i've said this before maybe i haven't but i went to an easter service at a church when i was at school in walla walla it was like the just basically like the big church in the area mm -hmm. and i went there for their easter service and i counted how many times i was welcomed like when I pulled into the driveway. Mm. And so like yeah. I and I did I did everything. Like a wave, I counted like, oh, that's a welcome. Like that's that's like that's kind yeah. of somebody. And so from the moment I pulled into the driveway to the moment I left the service, it was yeah. 29 times wow. like I was greeted Nine by times. somebody there. And like <laughs> I was like, oh, that's yeah. like really good. Like and mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, the parking lot there was not big, but they were like they had people standing in the parking lot mm. that were like welcoming you as you got there and they had like umbrellas for you it wasn't even raining but they're like oh to shield you from the sun and, and like i'll walk <laughs> you into church and yeah. like then yeah. these old guys are at the doors and they were welcoming me and then like yeah. like oh this way and then i remember i walked in this was like the second or third time so no one really knew who i was um but one of the greeters was just standing in the aisle way of the mm. the service and then she noticed that i was younger and so she like grabbed me by my wrist and she's like here come sit with like all of the young people and like took me to the very front of the church and yeah. she's just like tapped like four guys on the shoulder and they're like he's like they're like he's new um welcome him and wow. so they were like oh yeah come you can like dance with us in the front and like you know i'm yeah. adventist so i was like i'll like, bunny dance. hop like i don't know <laughs> yeah. but yeah. it was like super cool yeah um that's tight very exactly. loving church yeah, yeah i have and and, good things to and, say. and and you know and here's where we come you know we're kind of taking this this path here but we come back to the the concrete right the mm. basics and i think that as as a church um it's crazy but we coming back to these simple ideas mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. a, a, a lot of communities we don't I don't think we understand yeah. something something simple as I think at crosswalk you call it first impressions mm -hmm. or greeting I know that's that's, that's cool. that this this is getting very basic but there's so much importance yeah. in the small things worship starts with that's where worship starts yeah. the love of God we have to you know we're on the front lines that that's where mm -hmm. that's where it starts mm -hmm. and uh, you know I know at, at, at anthem that's something that we um, we're in this weird place. We haven't started in person yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've done one. We've done one. Yeah, we did one. 
that's that's this culture that we want to begin to build is that when you when we when we come we're a part of this community it's it's not uh, it's not we're passive. not here to, to get, we're here to give. Yeah, that's, that's so good. It's, it's about giving. I know that sounds so basic, but yet no, dude, that's it's powerful, so important. Man. And uh, we want to begin to build that culture where it's a culture of, hey, what, hey, how's it going, man? So here's, the, here's, here's, my, <laughs> here's my thing is I think the vast majority of Christian movements, yeah, not all of them, but the vast majority start off with these concepts. I want to love, we want to love people. And so in doing that, they say like, okay, then we need to make sure our community is focused on this. And so to be a, be a part of our community, we have all of these standards that you have mm-hmm. to meet. Right. Yeah. But then all of a sudden in doing that, you've created this idea of like, if you don't meet these standards and they'll, they'll start off, like they usually start off pretty, like you have to be a loving person to be a part of this community. Mm-hmm. And so it starts off good hearted but then it turns into a few years down the line of like you have to mm. have this orientation you have to have this um uh you can't be a part of these certain groups right, right? you and dress so, this way or exactly mm-hmm, and yeah. you know you see yeah dress this way but even like even at contemporary churches it'll be like that you gotta like you gotta look this nice you know mm. and so we create these standards which i don't think standards are a bad thing but we create these standards and then it becomes a outside versus inside and yeah. us versus them yeah. And so where's the balance of, because mm. mm. st- standards are important. Like that, those mm-hmm. are important yeah. things, yeah. but where's the standards of like, you have your standards, but you also are welcoming to all. Mm. Yeah. I, I, you know, this reminds me of, have you guys ever watched that cartoon movie? Uh, it's called over the hedge. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, throwback. That was a great movie. We used to watch it in, yeah, in my dad's good. truck. He, we used to have the TV in the back, that little tiny guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Anyways. yeah, yeah. When cars used to come with TVs. Yeah. Before Imagine phones. that. Four phones. Um, so in that movie, uh, I'm just thinking this off the top of my head. This might not make any sense, no, but go I with hope it, go it does. Uh, there's a scene where like the main, what is it, like a fox or... or RJ, RJ, the raccoon. The raccoon, that's what it is. He starts unfolding like how all of life revolves around... <clears throat> all of life revolves around getting food. Mm. That everything that humans do is to <laughs> just eat more food. So they, they go to work to get food. Or, or they yeah. work out like exercise to, to eat, eat more, more food. food and then they get cars so they can go get food. Like everything, yeah. he like breaks it down in a way where food is like the central thing. He says, we um, eat to live, humans live to eat. Mm-hmm. That was like the tagline. That's what I remember. Over the <laughs> you know, dude. You yeah. Know. That was the movie. And, and you know, I, I think it's, take that concept because in a sense it's wrong, but it's right. But it's mm-hmm. also wrong, right? Because that's not why we do everything. But for for like for the sake of this this analogy, let's take that as truth. Like ev- okay, everything yeah, that yeah. humans do is to eat, eat, right? Mm-hmm. I I think in church, what it should be is everything that we do should be so that we can love, or that we can feel or experience the love of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I say that because mm. being a part, uh, like, and I think you guys, you guys, you guys are part of like this movement. We're like going forward in like a different direction, not, not like the only right direction, but obviously a Anthem direction, is doing like yeah. dope contemporary like worship. Right. And, and, and Crosswalk, we're doing that as well. And people have called us out for it uh, multiple times of like, yeah, like, yeah. that's not, that's not what you should be doing. Like it, it, it's, it's against what Ellen White said. I don't even know. Stuff like that. <laughs> um, and, and for, for on, on service level, I'm like, man, this guy's crazy. Uh, but what I've actually found to be true is that we can produce some of the dopest worship sets mm-hmm. and get like the most amazing production done, but also fail to love people at the same time. And so what's true. happened is like, it, 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 I'm not saying this is what Crosswalk does, but I can see how at times as leaders, we have to have such um, vigilance in this is that we can almost make the worship experience the object as opposed to mm. reaching people and making sure that they feel loved. Instead yeah. of it being the conduit for love, exactly. it becomes the yeah. goal itself. Yeah, yeah. which it, it's so fun, right? Like to produce creative things. Like I saw yeah. that on your story. Like you just had that giant wall behind you projected and like yeah, that was so that was dope, fun. right? And it, it's so fun to make these things. But at the end of the day, I think what's something we have to to always funnel it back to is like the reason we're doing this is to love people, to mm-hmm. to lead people to Jesus, so that they yeah. can experience that 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 weightlessness that comes with a life with Jesus. And in the same way, you know, uh, the, was that RJ? RJ the um, RJ the raccoon. The raccoon connected everything back to food. I think always like we have to connect everything that we do back to love. 
Like it, mm-hmm. and at the that's end so of the good, day, yeah. it, it it's <clears throat> like you said, it's so basic. But at the end of the day, that's why people come to these things, right? Yeah. I yeah. I, I remember a season in my life where, just to get real real transparent, I, I was dealing with a lot of like existential questions, and I for a good two weeks I like lost my faith. Like yeah. I, I just wasn't able to to process some of these questions and. In that two weeks, it might not sound like a long time, but being in those two weeks, it's like you don't know when the end is. Dude. And the it, questions are there. And huh, yeah. Dude, yeah, we've all been that season. We can't even wait through a five minute ad on YouTube, bro. Can you imagine like two weeks of just like <laughs> this? Like I, I was just in constant the, questioning. Yeah, yeah no, bro. It, it's terrible. And and at the end of it, it wasn't it wasn't that I ever got answers to these questions. And we could get supplementary answers to a lot of things, right? But what actually led me back to to Jesus was was love as basic as it is it's also yeah. the thing that our souls crave the most that unity that connection with our creator that that feeling of we are not meaningless we are not just people on this earth but we are loved by yeah. our creator like that that is what people mm. desire and yeah. i i think yeah. at the end of the day like even even if it's the the worship production or if it's these big philosophical questions that we feel we have mm-hmm. answers to at the end of the day, that's not what's going to keep people because we could have mm-hmm. the best worship set, but also be the worst people. Like mm-hmm. what yeah. people crave and what people need is love. And I think yeah. one of the things that we have to make a point of is, is also always returning to that center. Like we mm-hmm. do this because of love, because yeah. we're loved and we want to make sure that other people know that they're loved as well. Amazing. Love becomes the standard, mm. you could say. In yeah, a sense. that's. Yeah. And I think, and, and no, that's good. And I kind of tag off what you're saying, Andy, too loving you know we throw this thing of love you know somehow we always end up back here at the gospel mm. yeah right <laughs> but we throw this thing about love around you know and um this is gonna maybe hopefully sounds come across the right way, right way but how big is your love mm. and i say that you know as as a community a gathered community a christian community you know when we you you look at the this and like I said this always keeps coming up in our podcast but you look at the love of Christ and it mm-hmm. was no small love yeah you know and That's so good like I said he came from his world made a trip down to our world mm-hmm. <laughs> started to dress like us eat like us talk like us he you know that was that was a massive love yeah. and so I think another thing is we can talk about loving as a church. You know, yes, we are a church that loves, and we've kind of talked about the basics. I mean, we need to start with the basics, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. your greeting needs to, needs to mm-hmm. start with the basics. But then we also ask ourselves: Are we massively loving? That's okay. Are we? Are do we have a massive love? Yeah. Right. Are we? What are we doing in the community that is massive love, mm. where where people go, wow, that's the, the church. That's the church yeah. that loves. Yeah. You know. Um, and in in and we're in the sense of that if if your church, Crosswalk Anthem Loma Linda University Church, if they were to leave the community, all of a sudden they were mm. up and disappear. Would your community feel it? Yeah. Would they notice? Would they notice? Yeah. Would it matter? I think, and that's and that's a that's yeah, a, coming back to that's a right. huge place to know. Are we a church? Are we a community that yeah. loves? You know, I, I've seen communities that. They, uh, you know, a community that I, I, I'm new here. I just came from a community mm-hmm. that that uh, does an extreme home repair for yeah. a family uh, in need, a low wow. income family, or a, a dad who had an accident and isn't able to work anymore, and their house is falling apart. They they send the family, like the show, two weeks away. Uh, they redo their house. Uh, there's hundreds of people come out from the neighborhood. They wow. move that bus and they come and and the reaction, the people that have a this brand that's renovated incredible. home that yeah. that's massive love that's, that's love that that's love that that makes a splash that makes a wave yeah. you know and um, i think i say this i say this i'm pretty sure i've said this every single podcast and i'll say it again <laughs> is that pa- the pandemic hit and many churches thought they were these epic centers of love and yeah. the world would miss them and the world asked people please don't meet mm. because your church is not essential yeah. Like I say that every time. And that was like, that should have been the biggest wake up call for yeah. churches. Yeah. Right. Now there are many churches and um, I brag about my dad all the time. His church was like called by the county and was like, hey, can you guys still please continue to meet? Wow. Because you feed the homeless. Um, not only feed the homeless, they house the homeless. Yeah. Like yeah. They literally have rooms in the church that house mm-hmm. homeless mm-hmm. and they give away over 40 
um, thousand pounds of food a week to low income families. Like, mm-hmm. so the church, they were asked like, please continue to be the yeah. epicenter of like your community. That's incredible. We, you can't close cause you're essential. Yeah. yeah. That's- and I would hope all of our churches are using this time during the pandemic to be like, we need to refocus our love mm. because maybe we haven't been focusing on love. Yeah. Dude, you, you're spot on about that. First of all, shout out your dad. That's incredible that their church Shout's is such dad. a, your dad is awesome. Uh, I love also, that guy. Josh was talking about his dad's church. So, <laughs> hey, Josh's dad's church. We're, cool we're, we're, we're proud sons. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think this is like the third podcast we brought Honor up. Our dad. <laughs> no, and I'm not bringing up this point ever again. I'm so sorry, we're everybody. Done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, oh, man. I totally forgot what I was going to say. You were I'm talking sorry. about, no, I got it. I got it. I got it. You were talking about your, your, the community. Would they feel it if you left? Okay. Here's what I was going to say. Uh, for me, what I, what my struggle is, is, is the love that I experience from Jesus often is very poetic. Mm. And I like to deal in poetics because it's what feeds my soul. Yeah. So w- that's come to like worship music. I, I love the lyrics uh, mm. because they're, they're, sometimes they're practical, but a lot of times they're, they're poetics. Mm-hmm. Um, like how deep is your love like an ocean or, or I'm, that's right. stereotypical mm. like lyric, but that, that's, that's what feeds my soul. But the tension that I've often sat in is poetics at some point have to meet my actual life Mm -hmm. it can't it can't remain poetics and while poetics will will do wonders for the soul for our our inner world there's also an outer world that needs to experience tangible physical love and we look at jesus that's that's the love that he gave i'm i'm I'm, i can't stress enough how much tension was probably relieved from people's conscious like guilt you know Mm -hmm. but at the same time that was always paired with healing with with right. an update in status, with yeah. with with physical things that happen. Jesus and brought worth to people when their society told them they weren't exactly they were worthless. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think one one of the things the pandemic one hundred percent brought light to me was it would be it would be a shame if the only thing that I made oh the only thing that I did on this earth was create worship services, mm. which that that's not to diminish what the importance. No, of we them, all right? love like. Yeah. communal worship we, like, it is it's a beautiful thing yeah but everything that happened during these last seven months and it wasn't just the pandemic i mean there's mm-hmm. people in the streets right we had protests, protesting exactly. and all this it brought to light the fact that church cannot exist simply for our personal life with jesus mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. if we're going to be the people of god it means impacting the world around us right. this is not about yeah. me this is about us and, and Josh, you've said this several times, is that our worship can't just be vertical between us and God. Like it has to be horizontal so as well. Yeah, exactly. It's There's, yeah. it's, it's, you could say, you know, it's, it's a cross, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to connect so with God. Symbolic. Yeah. That's so symbolic. That's so It's a cross. <laughs> you you got to go and up horizontal. and down and left and right. Yeah. And, and, um, you're talking about, you know, the corporate worship gathering, how rather than being informative, needs to be transformative. Mm. Yeah, you said that too. It needs to be not point. only vertical, but also horizontal. Yeah. And so looking at it from a, uh, you know, from a, a worship corporate leader perspective, I say corporate, I'm not a businessman. <laughs> <laughs> we, well, we say corporate worship, so yeah. that, that's what the corporate yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Is that... <laughs> the industry. Worship let, <laughs> you know, for, for the vision for Anthem, and I'm, and I'm I'm sure with with Crosswalk as well, the vision for Anthem is, is that, let that be a, uh, a fountain. Let that be the beginning of the mm-hmm. fountain, where this this is this is our landing zone, where where the influence begins, yeah, and it goes out, yeah, and it grows, and and whatever happens in the the whatever happens in that in that corporate setting is only a small scale mm. of what's going to happen, yeah, right? you know. And we've said this before, and I know it's the same for Andy because we've we've talked several times, but that. God is this creator. He's the ultimate creator. He created humanity. And we humans, I'd like, we have the uniqueness to be created in that same mm. image of God. And so all of that created creativity that we find in God, that is intrinsic to the soul of humans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so all of this, this fountain idea of just overwhelming like beauty and love and wonder and majesty, that yeah. is intrinsic to our, our, our beings yeah. and humans. And I think finding that within ourselves, right? Um, this 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 godlike persona that God is trying to awaken in us mm-hmm. is so important for us to be able to love is because God's built love into the very fabric of who we are. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so yeah. finding that and then finding a community that strives for that, like you said, like the center mm-hmm. of it, that is the goal of 
at least for Anthem, mm. and I know it to be true for Crosswalk because we've had several conversations. Yeah, this love is intrinsic, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this idea that you know, you're going back to First John, God is love, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's almost interesting. This is where it kind of gets a little deeper. Is that this idea that God is love? God, this this love exists in our world, whether mm -hmm. we know it, whether it's, whether it's, it's moving, in the church, whether, you know, whether we want to say quote unquote atheist or, mm -hmm. you know, people that still go out and wow. do acts of kindness and, and they don't even believe in God. Well, I, I, God is love. God is this force that's moving it. And, yeah. and maybe uh, we as a, a Christian community have, I guess you could say we've only maybe become a, we've named that love mm -hmm. in a sense. We've become there aware we of that fine, love. We've, we've named yeah. that love, but yet... I think we need to have that bigger mindset of we kind of limit it to, you know, God and to this, this space, right? Yeah. but God is love and this love is moving in our world. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's moving in, in our Christian communities. Mm -hmm. It's moving outside of our Christian communities. Oh, it's yeah. moving in. in wow. And I think that yeah. come, we need, we need to open our minds to this bigger picture of God yeah. And love. God has tied himself to love. It is intrinsic to who God is. Mm -hmm. And we find that love exists even within the godless. Mm -hmm. And That's it's great. almost as if there Say can it, be no godless. You experience God without even without even naming, naming it. it. Yeah. And so God is God is, God has saturated the world. <laughs> and the beauty is as the church, we're striving to we know that that exists. Mm -hmm. We know that 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 the saturation of God exists, and we strive to be a light in that. But the crazy thing is that God is so much bigger than that, yeah. because He's already found Himself in the godless. Yeah, mm -hmm. He's already working, and and He's there. Yeah. He is love, and He's already working within the one who's rejected it. That's so good, dude. I one of the I had this experience um, a couple months back. Uh, it was it was it was a wild experience. So I'm not gonna tell the whole story, but essentially, this dude <laughs> wanted to fight me. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't see you as someone who just gets into fights. Uh, I know, dude. <laughs> and, he, and I was like, hey, man, just relax. Nobody's trying to fight here. And okay. Anyways, um, and, and I won't get into the whole story. I'll tell you the story another time. But uh, essentially, I was I had to walk these two kids back to a motel that they're staying at okay. um, to make sure that they're okay and whatnot. And it was about like a half mile, like a half mile walk. And we're walking down the street in Riverside. And... Uh, the neighborhood that we were in was very uh, sketchy. Uh, yeah. You know, there was definitely... Wasn't your favorite neighborhood? It was... It, well, it might be my favorite neighborhood, but oh, also... Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it, it, was, it wasn't necessarily a safe neighborhood, let's put it that way. And, you, you know, you saw... you. It, it, it's common to see things happening mm -hmm. uh, around you, like um, from different people. And we were walking down the street, and I have this sense of... Uh, protectiveness over these two kids that I'm, I'm walking them back to this motel and we're walking past this group of, uh, of people who seem to be using and, and my immediate response was like, I need to go on the defense. I need to make sure that these people are going to stay away from these kids, that they're protected and whatnot. Yeah. And we're walking down and I'm like in this defense mode and this kid, uh, re like, and mind you, we had just bought these, these kids food, mm -hmm. um, they were from another state. They were there just for like their, their mom had to get a surgery Got and it. they were staying in a motel and whatnot. And they had only like $10 to get food for them and four of their brothers and sisters. So I was like, no, we'll, we'll buy you food. whatnot. Yeah, I bought yeah. them food. And we're walking back. And I knew that this kid had like $2 left, you know, and he takes out the money from his bag and, and, and he walks up to this lady. And my first like thought was like, I need, I need to protect yeah, this yeah. kid from Stay this lady. From like people. like yeah. don't be next to this lady. And then, and, and he gives it to her and she goes, thank you so much, Sonny. Uh, and he just says that. And, and then my response to the whole situation was like, Hey man, uh, do you, do you know her? Or like, just to, uh, what I was trying to communicate was like, you gotta be safe. Don't just talk to strangers, you know? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I do know her, which I was shocked. Cause they're, they're from another state, you know? Mm. And he goes, um, the other night, um, my family needed money and she gave money to us huh. so that we could eat. And this was like, a, wow. a a displaced person, you know? Wow. And I I remember feeling such shock and such almost guilt at the the gut reaction. Of course we need to be safe and it's right, right. important for all that, but but my first reaction was like, wow. man, this like the, these people don't know 
love. Like they, they don't, they're going to just hurt and what, hurt each other. And, right. and outside of the church, and, and you could label even as the most. Outside of society. Yeah. Yeah, yeah what you're saying. I saw the purest form of love, just caring for your neighbor mm -hmm. a, along this journey of life. And I think one of the, one of the things that I need to, two things that I've, I've recognized for my life is I need to stop acting as if the church is the savior, the savior of the world. Like, mm. like we already have a savior. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And, and two, I, I need to, I need to make sure that my love doesn't stay in the poetics, but it always meets action and that mm. it, it's not just something that I think about and that I journal about in, in my room, but it, it's actually something that's impacting the world. Mm. Um, yeah, so that was just something that came to mind right now when you were talking, bro. Like it, it, so it always so has good. to meet. That's a great story. Word. Yeah, man. That's so good, man. And I think that that is a perfect place to come to a close. I think we'll close so. it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, folks, the answer is love. Love, <laughs> always love. <laughs> yeah, you know, we've had this conversation, and there's there's a lot of different ideas, but I think as a as a community. As a person, I think what you're talking about is true. It's time to put the poetics, to put the thoughts, mm. to put it into action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so think yeah. about that. You know, think about your church. How how are you? How are you loving? How are you massively loving? Mm. Just as Christ massively loved us. Yeah. So uh, we're so gonna, good. like I said, we'll leave it at the gospel once again. Yeah. Let's go. Once That's great. Again. Hey. Thanks for joining so, uh, us, everyone. Thank you guys. Uh, for joining us thank yeah, you thank Andy you. Yeah, for yeah. coming out thanks and, for having uh, me you yeah. gotta have you guys over totally we're yeah. trying to get a, uh, an official podcast going on over there so when yeah. we do we gotta get you guys over there on oh there. great yes yeah. yes so thank love you so much man and uh, love what you guys are doing yeah, okay. and excited for the future of Crosswalk excited for the of future of Anthem mm -hmm. and uh, God is God is moving in big ways and, and we're stepping into that we're, yeah. we're all stepping into that so once again, guys, thank you for joining us for uh, number three of our podcast. Uh, this upcoming weekend, we're going to be having our online gathering. So join us for the usual. And then once again, you'll see us uh, for our podcast. So thank you, guys. We love you. And we'll see you next time.